how to increase your MCAT score significantly using nine simple strategies that we teach our own students that I'm sure are going to work for you as well. I'm going to go over each of these nine strategies one by one so that you could use this if you're struggling with the MCAT right now. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Beruz Momeni. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of One Question Podcast. And during these episodes, if you've never watched or listened to any of them, what we do is we try to dissect one single topic and give you as much detail as possible so you could implement the same strategies on your own and be able to get to that next stage. And in this case, for example, I'm going to talk about how to increase your MCAT score. So how do you do this? First of all, of course, you know, the MCAT is important. And it's important because a lot of schools, there are some schools that don't use the MCAT, but majority of them do. And not only that, uh, unfortunately, you know, in another episode, uh, I'm going to discuss why the MCAT is not necessarily fair or scientific, but that's who cares right now because you have to do it and you have to do really well. And most schools, unfortunately, what they do is they look at your GPA, they look at your MCAT before they move to other things. Some schools have changed now, actually, which is good because they look at your MCAT, they look at your GPA, they look at all other things before they make a decision. Of course, I recommend if I were you to apply to those schools, but regardless, you still need a very good MCAT score. So how do we tackle the MCAT? And I'm going to give you the nice step strategy that we teach our own students. Number one. You have to take a diagnostic uh, test under realistic conditions. So what do I mean by realistic conditions, which is the very important key? You need to decide what day of the week you're going to take the test, uh, the actual test. So make sure the diagnostic test is taken on the same day of the week at the same time of the day. And it should be a realistic timed uh, simulation and take the breaks just like the actual MCAT, make sure it's exactly timed each section, and it should be a test you have never seen before. So I would even recommend that you wear the same exact clothes you're gonna wear on your actual test, be in the same exact location or similar. So for example, if, uh, you know, if, if this is gonna be taken at a testing center, which means you're not gonna be doing this at home, don't do this at home, it doesn't make sense. Go at least somewhere that's public, there's some background noise really, really important that you mimic the same conditions so you get the same sort of level of stress, et cetera, that comes with it. So that's one. Now, once you've taken the diagnostic test, you're going to go and figure out your percentile score and scale score. How do you do that? By the way, you could go on uh, to our calculator on BMO's blog, bmo.blog. I think the calculator, we're going to put the link to it somewhere around this video or podcast, so you can go to it and calculate that. But the idea is, once you do that, you're going to be, uh, get a very good sense that, hey, certain uh, sections are your weakest and certain sections are your stronger, strongest points. Uh, so what you do is you sort these sections from the weakest to the strongest, and then you create a study schedule that will allow you to finish each section on the MCAT starting from the weakest and working your way to the strongest within a span of two to three months. Then you have to stick to that study plan. So the study plan and the idea is that, you know, you've back calculated two to three months, whatever you think is best given your uh, diagnostic score is the time that you're going to be able to be ready to write the test and you start with the weakest because that's the area you're going to like the most help with and you start with that because if you don't get over that hump the rest doesn't matter it doesn't make sense for you to for example uh focus on physics if you're getting 99th percentile on physics you know it's, there's it doesn't like going from 99 to 100th percentile first of all is very hard even going from 90th percentile to 95 uh 95th percentile is very hard but going from Let's say a, a section where you're getting 60th percentile to 90th percentile is a lot easier. The second reason for that is when you start studying, your motivation is at its highest level. As time gets closer to uh, the exam time, your motivation depletes. 
literally you have a certain amount of motivation per day and also over a span of a project. The other thing you want to do is you want to, uh, uh, as you're going through your study plan, so now this is, uh, so I've given you diagnostic tests, short from weakest to strongest. Uh, third is creating a study schedule that lasts two to three months. And my fourth thing is you stick to that study plan no matter what. So uh, the best way to do that is, for example, dedicate the first chunk, three, four hours as soon as you wake up to do that. Less likely you're going to get distracted by, uh, you know, I don't know, Netflix, TikTok, other random social media, etc. And uh, less likely friends and family are going to also be a source of distract distraction. So do this early on and try to get up as early as possible while you're studying for the MCAT. Maybe if you're not used to getting up to, like, you know, until 8, 9, start getting up at 5, 6 a.m. It has a huge advantage that's going to add to you. Uh, of course, you have to sleep a little bit earlier. The next tip I have, my fifth tip is you need to now learn as you're going through these passages, learn how to identify and have a strategy for different types of questions. Some questions are just multiple choice standalone, simple. Some are passage based and then passage based questions have different types of questions themselves. And uh, when we're talking about cars, cars itself has multiple different types of questions. Again, I'm not going to go through the details of that because that's a topic for another uh, video that we're going to create for you that you could watch. But it's also on our blogs for identifying different types of questions. Why is that important? Because if you know, as soon as you read the question, if you know what the question type is and have a strategy for it, it literally speeds you up. So that was the fifth point uh, that I just gave you. What is tip number six? Take a new practice test each week and go over uh, the questions that you were not able to uh, get correct answers to right after. So you want to keep mimicking the realistic simulation that I told you on a weekly basis. Maybe not the first few weeks as you're just getting up to speed with everything, but after the first few weeks, every week you should be doing a diagnostic test or a practice test, I should say, not a diagnostic test at this juncture. So you study for a week, one day of the week, you're going to do a diagnostic test. And then right after, maybe the next day, you're going to go over the mistakes and learn to understand what happened. This is really important. Until you understand what's, what's gone wrong, there is no sense to go back to studying or doing another practice test. This is a common mistake. Now, the next tip I have for you is you have to keep doing this process on a weekly basis until you get 90th percentile on every section of the MCAT or above in three independent practice tests. This is really important because you don't want this to be just a fluke, right? If you one time every section was 90th percentile, that could just be a fluke. Maybe we're having a good day. Maybe the, the practice test was easy. You have to do this on three different occasions, back to back to back to back. Once you've done that, then you have to go and take the test immediately. This is why I don't recommend people to get too attached to their original plan test date, even if they've scheduled it, because, you know, having to cancel a test and, you know, even if you lose your three, four hundred dollars, it's not as much as having to lose an entire year because your test score is not good and you get rejected because of it. It just doesn't make sense. Also, studying for the MCAT is just too hard. You don't want to write it multiple times. You want to write it once and that's it. So you keep doing this process. The minute you've scored 90th percentile or above on each section of the MCAT, three independent times, you go write the test. That's it. Essentially, that's it. And this is uh, people tr get really flustered and uh, make this complicated and they look for different types of strategies. But this is the process we've helped so many students with. And as soon as you develop this strategy and the discipline to stick to it, I can guarantee you're going to do really well on the MCAT. That was it for today's episode. If you like uh, to if, uh, stay up to date with future episodes, of course, subscribe. If you believe any friend might benefit from this, definitely share it with them. And of course, if you have any questions, 
ask in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to answer every single question you have. And best, uh, most of all, I really hope that what I uh, provided is going to help you score higher on the MCAT. And uh, uh, I hope that this is going to be something that you could implement today. Thanks so much for watching this. And I hope to see you during the next episode. Talk to you soon.